and then we're good to go. Thanks, Sarah. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, the OpenStack Lucy uh, community meetings. We are uh, we are very excited to have uh, a lot of a uh, very uh, very uh, experienced uh, developers here to share what's going on with the within the new release for the project. Uh, we still have people join here, so uh, and uh, there's a two two room uh, confusions, but uh, don't worry, everything will be recorded. So if you miss it, uh, there will be links for you, uh, video for you, and the video for the previous previous uh, meetings is already uh, released at the mailing list. If you check it, you will see the the, the, the previous one that Muhammad uh, uh, moderated. So uh, hi, I'm uh, Rico Lin. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm from uh, Open State TC, uh, Technical Committee, and uh, so uh, we 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 are here to uh, very excited to say uh, we we got the we got survived through the Usuri and uh, we we jumped into uh, Recorias and thank very much for uh, for uh, JP's uh, from uh, from Sosays. Uh he's doing very good job here. And Muhammad is the new uh, TC uh, chairs, and uh, so I uh, will be very excited to see what's going to be the new change here. And you'll see the number is a very crazy number, but the limit is two. Uh, we have like 24,000 uh, code changes in Usli, and which is very, I mean, very big number, and that's more than a thousand developers from uh, 188 organizations during the Usuri cycle. I mean, only the Usuri cycle, which is a uh, half, half year. So everything we have is, uh, uh, is, is, uh, is very, uh, it's a very huge numbers of support from the community members. And uh, we can't say more, uh, we can't say uh, how we can uh, appreciate for all the works. So thanks everyone to uh, whoever whoever contribute and whoever do any in any format of uh, of contributions. So thank you. And uh, uh, let, let's start with uh, talking about we have a lot of uh, things going on in Usuri. One of them is we have a uh, uh, some new SIG is uh, is generated. As uh, if you don't know what uh, SIG is going, uh, what SIG is uh, for, and uh, it's a special interest group. So it is supposed to be a, a, a bridge, a channel for uh, developers and uh, and uh, operators and users to uh, sit down together to figure out how they can improve in a specific use case. And uh, what what is the SIG you can find out in the in the very below links uh, comparison of offshore groups of structure. And the new SIGs are, you will see like uh, testing and collaboration tools, automations, large scale, multi arch, uh, technical writing, ANSPO, I18, and, and con containers. So check out those SIG. Uh, we also have a lot of SIG that's already run in there and running well, like the security SIG and others. So uh, if, if you're interested in helping in SIG, they very much appreciate it. And uh, the Usui cycle has, uh, Generated a lot of mistakes, like like what we list here. Uh, we are we are trying to work hard to uh, to maintain and and keep those sick uh, uh, running and give a meaningful uh, uh, task to do. So uh, stay tuned. So I uh, I just saw the uh, from the Zoom. Uh, the, the Zoom chat channel say what is different between a SIG and working group? That's very good questions. And uh, the difference between SIG and working group is a uh, is a uh, is the uh, we, we used to call a working group that is under uh, user committees governments, uh, but right now SIG is under both technical and user committee. Uh, I mean the. And the, the technical committee and user committee government. So uh, uh, we're trying to make sure that uh, we can put all the efforts to helping this kind of a 
uh, cross user developer bridge to uh, to to be uh, more f more formal and get more uh, uh, government's uh, blessing to uh, to keep running. What you will see, you can see the uh, the, the details in the links I uh, I post on the uh, on the slide. So uh, okay, next we have community go, and community go is uh, is something that we're trying to do uh, very every cycle uh, the community wide. So we have two goals for recently. The first one is thanks to Kendall, Kendall Nelson, who she uh, she uh, put her a lot of her efforts to uh, to trying to have the project specific contributors plus uh, PTL documents. Uh, we uh, the, the progress of it is still under de under developing, but uh, it it won't take too much time to for for projects to. Uh, to 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 work on, so and uh, she already provides a, a lot of uh, helpful uh, informations for to helping projects to achieve that goal. So I believe it will be it will be happen very shortly. And the, the the meaning of this one is that we uh we're trying to make sure that the well the, the contributors and the the the, the new PTLs roles. Uh, the, the volunteers can uh, have clear pictures who want what specifically for for projects. So uh, you you should be able to check those uh, those uh, lo those documents for for most projects right now to to see how you can specifically contribute to to projects uh, without getting confusion. I hope. And the second one is Drop Python two point seven support, which Thanks to uh, thanks to Gosham, this is just announced completed two uh, near two weeks ago, and uh, we only have like uh, Swift and, and the other uh, and uh, another like I think it's just I think mostly Swift and another, another project to uh, to still keep Python two point seven support, but uh, mostly. Most of the projects is already dropped the Python 2.7 and declared to be Python 3 only. So, uh, uh, so this is very uh, help, helpful for the entire community to uh, to adopting new structures. Uh, that is completely so. Check it out for for projects and beware that since Usually is already Python 3 only. So uh, when you are trying to upgrade to Usually, you have to uh, be aware of it. Okay, and uh, we have a projecting gathering that will happen next month, early next month, and uh, due to the current uh, uh, cases uh, for because of the coronavirus, we have to move it to virtually online. But which is, uh, might also be a good news because we already host a lot of uh, things online. So uh, people might, because of this, they might be able to join easy, easily. And uh, I think the, the, the I, I think the ticket is free. So if you plan to uh, helping and join, you, uh, you don't have to travel this time. But please join us, including projects. We have a lot of good projects that uh, we can use a hand, uh, and uh, we can use the feedback from uh, users, developers, and, and operators. And uh, we also have uh, a lot of SIG. I just mentioned that there will be uh, a lot of them will be also join the PDG as well, which they need user and and, and operators definitely. So uh, please join the SIG and. And also, we uh, we must say very a lot of appreciate for the sponsors who are actually making the PDG happen. Even though we move it to virtually, uh, they still they still support us to and uh, keep this community running. Uh, so check out the schedule. Uh, check go to register, and uh, and if you have anything uh, that the, if you have a team that missed the deadline to uh, register. You can reach out to pdg at openstake.org, 
which uh, the, I think they will help you to uh, to figure out what is going on. So uh, please join us, and uh, we will have a very uh, exciting week. Uh, we also have an open dev event this time, which is not a summit, and will, and it will be uh, also virtually online. And the, the difference this time is that there will be instead of one big event, it will be separate to uh, to two to three uh, events to uh, talk a specific questions and problems, which we hope that we can gathering uh, people's together to share the feedback to. Uh, to actually discuss something and have some outcomes from it, and that will this that should decide to uh, to help the community keep going. Uh, we have done a lot of amazing job in Ursula, which we will have project uh, update later. Uh, the uh, what will happen in uh, Victoria is definitely uh, will definitely depends on those events outcomes and and trying to uh, try to work for it. So uh, you can register those events. I think I think it's Free as well. Uh, hope I'm not wrong, <laughs> but uh, that's virtually so. It should be easy for you to join as well. So uh, please join us and, and share your your opinions and and share your efforts. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we first have singers. Uh, Frank was well, from the singers. He's a singer PTL. Share the singer project update. I will hand over to you, Frank. Hi, thanks. Um, I'm broadcasting from the Cinder World Headquarters in Oxford, Virginia, in the USA. Um, I hope everybody's doing well in this stressful time of a worldwide pandemic. Um, what I'd like to talk about is the project health of Cinder and what we've been doing. Uh, so just to give you a quick refresher, the Cinder project provides the OpenStack block, store block storage service the REST API, the scheduler, the volume service. And we also provide some client libraries, OS Brick that you use to attach stuff, and Cinderlib, which is a, um, it's a library that's used by Ember CSI. So it can be used for the container storage interface. And what it does is it allows you to use the drivers that have been written for the various Cinder backends if you don't need all the other Cinder services. So it makes a lot of sense for lightweight things like containers. So it's keeping Cinder relevant um, in this container-oriented age. Um, as far as uh, how the project's doing in terms of commits, um, so you can see the numbers there. In Stein, we had, and Train, we had roughly 150 people from roughly 40 to 50 companies. Um, I'm, so the data I've got was from Stack Stackalytics um, which was last updated April 22nd. So I don't know that much has changed, but we have, we're able to get everything we wanted to do during USURI, but we did it with 30 contributors from 13 companies. Um, so that's not so diverse. I, I didn't mention earlier, I'm a senior software developer at Red Hat. And so those percentages on the right there with RH are the percentage of uh, Red Hat. So. Red Hat and Usuri did 66% of the commits. Um, I'm only mentioning that. I mean, we're competent software developers, and uh, we're certainly very interested in keeping Cinder running and stable. Um, but it's also nice to have a diversity of opinion and people articulating what they need. Um, so if you're a developer or have developers that you can influence and they're looking for something to do, um, they might want to uh, join the Cinder project. All right, so as far as uh, content goes, um, very important part of Cinder is the backend drivers. So those are software that's stored in the uh, Cinder source code repository, in the main repository, but mostly written and supported by vendors who have various storage backends. Um, so we've got 68 right now, seven more are in unsupported status. What that means is in order for a uh, driver to be considered supported, it's got to be the case that the vendor is operating a third party CI that runs on all code changes to Cinder so that we can make sure nothing's breaking any of the uh, various backends because we don't have access to that much hardware. Um, so that's pretty much the same number that we had in, uh, in train. Uh, the difference is that in train we had um, 
something like, uh, I don't know, 14 um, drivers that were unsupported. So some of the vendors did make some effort to uh, make sure their drivers got supported. There's one security notice I wanted to bring to people's attention, and I'll paste the uh, link to it in the chat. Um, this was, it was announced on the mailing list uh, December 5th, so several months ago. Um, and it, it only occurs if you're using the Ceph backend and you're using a non-standard configuration. But there's a configuration option that can cause a security problem. And what we're proposing to do is just remove it in the Victoria release. So I announced it on the mailing list. Um, never heard anything back from operators, so I'm assuming that our plan to just remove it isn't going to cause any problems for anyone. But you might want to take a look at that, and if it does cause a problem, let us know right away so we can uh, try to come up with some other kind of it's plan. Kind of <laughs> and then uh, as far as uh, new features, I don't think there was anything major. Um, a lot of drivers added capabilities. So for the, the backend drivers that we've got, there's a basic set of functionality that everyone must implement. And then there are optional things that people can do to make their driver function better and uh, be able to implement more of the API. Um, so a lot of drivers added some more capabilities. Um, all these changes are documented in the Cinder release notes, so I encourage you to go take a look at those. They're kind of extensive, but they give you an idea of everything that happened. Um, I said nothing major. Uh, I guess one thing we did do is we added support for Glance uh, multiple backends and also for uh, Glance uh, image co-location, um, which are kind of important things for edge use cases. Uh, so those were added. And then uh, we're working on stability. We want to keep Cinder as stable as possible. We added some more voting gate jobs and more testing, and that's going to be an emphasis into Victoria as well. And next slide, please. Okay, so for the future, um, we're already underway for Victoria Milestone 1, which happens like maybe two weeks after the PTG. It comes up pretty fast. Um, so some things people are working on, there's a volume local cache um, that affects OS Brick, Cinder, and also Nova. Um, so that's work on that was started during the story, and it's uh, hopefully going to be completed early in Victoria. Um, we're working on encrypted volumes for NFS, so that hopefully will land by milestone one. There's a new driver that uh, patches are up for, and they've got their uh, third-party CI running from Hitachi. And then they're already some of the existing drivers have already put up patches for new capabilities. And then there's another effort to uh, do on the fly encryption of data that's traveling around OpenStack. And the GPG encryption support is going to go in the OS Brick library. And so that's being worked on also. And then the uh, virtual PTG, as Rico mentioned earlier, is June 1st through 5th. Um, it's not too late to participate in the discussion. So if you're interested, please take a look at our etherpad. Um, feel free to add a topic or to look at what topics are there and attend if you um, have an interest or have something you'd like to discuss. Um, things we're working on, there's interest in the iSCSI driver for Ceph. Um, there's a group in uh, Britain whose HPC group has expressed an inference and interest in helping us implement that. So hopefully that will happen. Um, and then we've done some work keeping unsupported drivers in tree longer. Um, we decided to do that during this cycle, and it worked out pretty well. I mean, usually you want to kick the drive. Our strategy has been to kick the drivers out as soon as they become, as soon as the third party CI starts failing, um, because we want to have the code as solid as possible. Um, but it's been, People have had problems with getting the uh, third-party CI running again. And so in order to prevent code churn, we're keeping the drivers in tree longer, um, although they have to be removed as soon as they cause the main cinder gates to fail. Um, so just want to mention that. And then we've got a continued emphasis on stability and improved automated testing. We're working on adding a lot of Tempest scenario tests to the cinder Tempest plugin. And then that can be run by the vendors in their third party CIs. So they get a complete workout and we can uh, be more confident of the reliability of the code. And, and um, 
that's pretty much it. So thanks for listening. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or you can, uh, I'll stick around and you can ask later. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Brian. There's a, uh, I would say there's a, going to be a lot of exciting things happen uh, for the PDGs uh, for single, so please join. And uh, next we will have uh, Octavia PTL, uh, Michael here to, to share the update. Thank you, Rico. Yeah, uh, my name is Michael Johnson. I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat, and I will be the PTL for Octavia in Victoria. So a few stats uh, for our progress in USURI. Even though we're a very small team, uh, we got quite a few uh, important things done. I want to say thank you to the team for all their contributions and, and working through the challenges we had in this release. And a uh, special thank you to Adam Harwell, the PTL for USURI. Uh, one of the more interesting things this uh, release for us is we mentored four college students. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But I also want to say thank you to the foundation and Kendall Nelson for helping support that uh, effort and uh, working with us and the students to provide some new features. So USURI highlights. Uh, one of the long requested features is load balancer availability zones. Uh, this allows an operator to define an availability zone inside Octavia. And when a user goes to deploy their load balancer, they can specify uh, the uh, availability zone they want to deploy that load balancer into uh, at creation time. So for example, for the uh, Infora driver, a load balancer availability zone defines the compute availability zone, the management network that will be used and the valid VIP networks uh, that a user can attach to their load balancer. So this enables use cases, uh, particularly in the edge space. So for example, deploying load balancing services to cellular locations or retail stores. Uh, retail was one of the use cases that was brought to us and, and detailed that led to this new feature. Also uh, on the client, we've added the weight uh, parameter this uh, helps automation uh, in that the client will now wait for um, activities uh, against the API to complete. So just like Neutron, uh, the Octavia API is an asynchronous API. So you can make your request, then the back end will go and work on that request. And while it's in process of provisioning that change, uh, the load balancer will go into a mutable state. With the wait flag, uh, the client won't return until that uh, immutable status is removed and the load balancer is now back into an available status. So really great for scripting and automation. Moving on. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we mentored four students. This was a partnership with North Dakota State University here in the United States. Uh, we brought those students in, brought them up on DevStack, taught them some uh, basics about OpenStack, and got them working on the code. And so the feature they delivered for USURI is TLS ciphers. So when you create a listener or a encrypted backend pool connection, uh, you can now specify the list of acceptable TLS ciphers uh, for that listener or that pool connection. This allows you to meet your security compliance requirements, such that when somebody tries to connect to that load balancer and they're using maybe a weaker security than was defined on the TLS ciphers list, uh, that request will be denied and they will have to use a higher security connection to connect to the load balancer. So excellent feature for uh, security compliance. The students also made great progress on uh, adding TLS protocol selection as well and that'll be landing fairly early in the Victoria uh, release cycle, where you'll be able to specify uh, TLS you know, 1.3 or 1.2 only uh, for your listeners or your backend pool uh, encryption connection. And then finally, but not least by any means, uh, one of the major efforts from the team was working on uh, control plane resiliency. So we're leveraging a technology that's part of uh, the OpenStack Oslo task flow project called Jobboard. 
what this allows us to do is checkpoint at various uh, points along the provisioning process of a load balancer. So each step that we take to create or, or deploy that load balancer, we will save off the state. And if anything goes wrong with that controller that happens to be uh, executing that provisioning sequence, we can uh, redirect that uh, provisioning request to an alternate controller and it'll pick up exactly where it was in the process of provisioning that load balancer. So this brings not just the resiliency that we have with multiple control plane instances, you know, multiple controllers, this goes into the sub provisioning flows and allows checkpointing and resumption of a failed flow uh, down at that detail level. So much faster uh, resumption in case something goes wrong. We're releasing that as kind of a technology preview in Usuri. You can uh, enable this through a con configuration setting. And we're hoping to make this the default driver in the Vittori release. Okay, thanks, Michael. Uh, a lot of exciting news as well. And, uh, and uh, next we have uh, Zoom. Uh, I'll hand over this to uh, Liu Hongbin. Hi. Uh, yeah, so my name is Hongbin Lu. I'm going to give an update for the Jun project. So, uh, possibly most people don't know about this project. This is the, this is the, because this is a new project and so a brief introduction. So Jun is an open stack container service. It provides a REST API for users to provisioning and manage containers uh, in the OpenSec cloud. And they can do that without, they can create a container without creating any VM or clusters uh, because the container will directly run in the compute host. So it just lies a VM in the lowest and each container has a neutron pot. So it can connect to the Neutron L2 networks that can be the same level as the VMs. And each container can buy mount the single volumes. So they have the options. So the user can create a container and give the options to configure the single volumes as the storage. And the one more thing is the journey is in agree with the placement. So what that means is the it is possible to have the VMs and container that is co-located in the same host because the placement is going to coordinate the scheduling of the VM and containers. And in in the compute node, there's a joint compute agent that is running inside the node. And the compute agent is going to interface with uh, Docker to manage the local containers. And that means that any container runtime that is compatible with Docker can be used together with Zoom. For example, it can use Docker with Kata containers on using Zoom. And on top, there's uh, orchestration layers. That Zoom is going to in a great, sorry, the Jun is in a great with. Uh, the first orchestrator Jun in a great with is HIT. So the HIT is an open set orchestration service and normally is used to orchestrate the uh, uh, VMs with uh, any other open set resource. And with right now with the Jun integration, it is possible to have the HIT template that is orchestrating the Join containers with uh, VMs and with any other open site resource, just just so the user can use a hit template to specify the topologies of the applications that consists of a bunch of containers. And the second of trader join in a great with the Kube is Kubernetes. And I'm going to talk about this in the next slide. Uh, so okay, the picture, the, the it looked the picture didn't didn't look very nice, but the, the but yeah. So the in this 
release, Zoom has several implement several uh, features. The most important feature uh, Zoom implement is the uh, improvement of the Kubernetes integrations. So this includes the support of the CRI uh, uh, engines. So why we why we introduce the CRI engines? Because uh, in before we are the only container engine we integrate with is Docker. But uh, in order to support the Kubernetes integrations, we need to support the concept of pod. But the pod is the Docker doesn't support the pod very well. So uh, instead of using Docker, we introduce a second container engine, which is CRI. And the CRI can support, natively support the concept pod, and it also integrates very well with the Kata container. So this will provide a better Kubernetes integration for, for us. So, uh, but in order to support the CRI, we need to introduce a network plugin as a CNI. So we introduce a Jun CNI, uh, which is basically doing the neutron pod bindings for configure the network of the of the pod. So uh, so first, uh, before creating a container, the Jun compute will call will call the neutron to create a neutron pod, and then. The Jun CNI will do the neutron pod bindings for the for the pod. And yeah, so this is the Kubernetes integration features. And the second feature is, is called the specify the host on creating the containers. So this feature allows the users with the admin privilege to create the containers with a host. So this will bypass the schedulers and direct and directly run the container in the specified host. And the third feature is called the uh, foreign IP associations. So this feature basically allow the users to associate a foreign IP uh, with the containers. And the, third, the last feature is support of the Docker entry point so the user can create containers with customized uh, entry point of the containers. So that's everything from my side. Okay, thanks Hongbin for the very detailed update and uh, the, the, the background. Uh, next, uh, I will talk about heat. Uh, hi, I'm, again, I'm Rico Lim from uh, EasySec. And, uh, and next slide, please. So uh, in, uh, oh, sorry, can, can we jump to the previous one? I, I, yeah, thank you, sorry, I, I didn't, uh, didn't saw that one. Uh, so we are very exciting to say, uh, we in Usuri, we have a lot of things going on. And if you're not aware what HEAT is, HEAT is uh, orchestration services, managed services, resources across multi-cloud. Uh, and you can also you can you can use uh, here to uh, to deploy resources across uh, multiple uh, open set clouds, which is supported in uh, this uh, recent releases. And in Earth3, we uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, sixty two contributors to to help and uh, sixty five reviewers to to uh, to have to review. So we can have uh, two hundred seventy three commits, which uh, it's it's not like the biggest in the earth, but uh, it's a lot. So we we thank for every efforts we have. So if you like to join us, please do. And if you have faced any difficulties in helping heat, uh, be, be be sure you uh, you you uh, send notice to me and uh, message it to me or other co reviewers. We would definitely help. Uh, uh, we're definitely looking forward to help you to onboarding. So uh, next slide, please. And in lastly, we have uh, some uh, some nice great news. Like one of them, we we have a, a lot of Octavia uh, new resources. Since Octavia, as you uh, see previously, Octavia doing a lot of a uh, nice job. So uh, we we have nothing else need to do, but we have to keep up with the resources they have, so people can have new features. Uh, and we also have a uh, have a uh, have a uh, nice guys to uh, rewrite the uh, XOR routers. 
uh, resource from Neutron. So we now have a new uh, extra router set with resources. Also, there's a QoS minimus bandwidth role. So you can actually set those uh, uh, QoS uh, quality of service uh, roles in, uh, in heat. And also we have uh, ironic support now. Uh, not every single ironic uh, API calls, but we are still working on the way for the rest of ironic resource. Right now you can use, it, in case is you can use hit ironic, uh, ironic client and uh, you can create ironic port. So I, I believe that will, be, that, that will be helpful in uh, certain ironic use cases. Uh, we also fighting uh, how to uh, to have uh, resources for uh, deploy directly deploy ironic bare metal uh, bare metal uh, servers through ironic, uh, but there's uh, still some review. The patch is there, but still needs some uh, review and update on the patch set. And we uh, aware that we also update resources to uh, adapting a new. Uh, New uh, new features like uh, you saw in the Octavia, there's a uh, there's availability zone there. So we also update the resource in heat to uh, to reflect that. And besides that, we uh, have a, a lot of uh, all the different uh, changes in resources. Uh, please please read our release note. Uh, we we have we're trying to make sure every every features every uh, rule breakings or uh, every upgrade relative issues. Uh, note are there in the release note. So, if any of these resources concerns you or interesting, uh, please read the release note. Uh, there will be uh, more details, and you can even find the patches there from there. Uh, there's a, a one deprecation, one deprecated resources since, uh, as we mentioned previously, there are uh, new extra route set. Uh, resource from in neutron. Yeah, yeah. So we removed the one in uh, for the extra route. And uh, also, as you already noticed, that the, the Python 2.7 uh, support is removed, and we now only support the uh, Python 3. Um, and we removed some API from service for uh, those API are not no longer supported in those services so we have no choice but to remove them so uh but you probably already aware things that we are last we are the last man standing for uh to keep that so uh so i i, will, I won't say you will be uh, breaking anything okay next slide please and as, as well we uh heat is uh exciting to say we also joined the virtual pdg this time uh, you will see the Easter pad that to uh, fill in to uh, any any topic that you're interested in. We are also looking forward to any operator, user, and developer feedback. And uh, we'll, uh, the, the the time will be Monday and Wednesday, uh, uh, 13 to 17 UTC time. Um, so please join us. Uh, we will put, we will put more information in this uh, virtual PTG Easter pad. Uh, if you have anything to say or feedback or crazy ideas, share to us. Also, we uh, you can check out the automation SIG. For who don't know what is automation SIG, automation SIG was originally uh, uh, auto scaling SIG and the uh, self healing SIG. Uh, those uh, these two SIG decide to uh, merge together since there are all, uh, a lot of overlapping uh, knowledge and a lot of overlapping efforts. Um, so. Uh, if you'd like to join the automation SIG, which uh, we are right now, we are short of uh, are short of uh, helping. We, we need uh, more uh, people to help us to uh, to keep uh, this SIG active. Um, we, we are doing some very exciting things to in uh, in community to guarantee the automations of of uh, of this community, and uh, including creating tests, CIs, and uh, other documents. So uh, join automation sake uh, in the virtual PTG if you like. Uh, I think that's all I have to share for the heat. And if you have any question or a problem, to please reach out to me. I will be always be there to to help. Thank you. And uh, next we are uh, move to uh, Manila. So, uh,
Gotham uh, here will be will be uh, dis will be uh, share his uh, PTL. Uh, thank you, Rico. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Gautam Pacharavi, a software engineer at Red Hat, and I've had the uh, privilege uh, to be the project tech lead for the Manila project for the Usti Recycle. So first off, uh, Manila is the shared file system service born in OpenStack. It can provide self-service uh, multi-reader, multi-writer file systems to clients over a network. And these clients can be anything, uh, virtual machines, containers, bare metals, you name it. So the Osuri release happens to be the 10th official release for this project. And uh, it's been a fairly busy one at that. I'd especially want to call out the involvement uh, of uh, two uh, outreach interns, uh, Soledad Koksala and Ma Maury Tam, uh, who contributed a lot of code uh, to the uh, OpenStack client integration for this cycle. And along with uh, other things to Manila UI and to the documentation as well. Uh, this cycle, we, we continue to work with our Google Summer of Code intern, uh, Robert Washik, uh, who, uh, who created the Manila container storage interface driver uh, in the cloud provider OpenStack repository and is also now the lead maintainer uh, for that effort. So we've committed many improvements to this cycle. The full list of them can be found in the release notes, uh, but I wanted to highlight a few things uh, through this presentation. Uh, first off, the latest micro version available uh, through the OSU re release is 2.55, uh, and with uh, API version 2.53, uh, we added Coda control uh, for share replication. Uh, so a uh, little background, we began working on share replication several several releases ago. And uh, last cycle, we implemented replication for uh, the hard multi-tenancy mode of shared backends. Uh, and this cycle, we're continuing this effort by introducing quotas uh, for the number and the capacity of shared replicas across your uh, share, shared file system backends. Uh, in Usuri, we also uh, committed several uh, improvements and graduated uh, the uh, CRUD APIs uh, for shared groups, shared group types, uh, shared group extra specs, um, and shared group snapshots. This means that uh, these APIs are now fully supported for production use, and uh, they'll continue to evolve uh, with the rest of the Manila API uh, via micro versioning. We're, we're thinking of extending these APIs already uh, to perform uh, group-based replication in the coming cycles. Um, we've made a few improvements to the scheduler, uh, notably the capabilities filter. Um, uh, it might appear small, but it actually uh, uh, has a larger impact um, to several clouds out there uh, that are relying on share type extra specification operations, uh, but hopefully positive impact. We've had the uh, feedback for this, um, and and we think that this is um, an and it, you know positive change. Uh, we've also fixed up the provision capacity estimation in the scheduler. Uh, it's now smarter, and it will not occur when it is not necessary. And this provides uh, some optimization um, and speed. Uh, with Usuri, we you you now have uh, the ability to take uh, clone your snapshots. Uh, across availability zones and storage pools. And uh, what this means is um, uh, Manila for a long, long time um, uh, has expected snapshot cloning to be instantaneous. Um, and this prevented the evolution of snapshots themselves, um, mainly because the expectation caused data gravity um, and snapshots, they couldn't be taken across the cloud. So in this cycle, we added some new workflows to accommodate a more asynchronous creation uh, for snapshot clones, and uh, this will hopefully pave the way for um, a lot of backends that were that did not support snapshot cloning uh, because it was slower, um, especially distributed st uh, storage systems like ZFS, uh, where uh, cloning of a snapshot is never instantaneous because uh, the data is spread across the uh, Ceph cluster. Uh, we hope to work on that in the in the upcoming releases, and uh, I, I, we, we oh, the next slide, thank you. Uh, we also changed uh, the behavior of uh, share resizing uh, and uh, this was also based on uh, feedback. Um, so extensions and shrinking, uh, they, they no longer hard fail uh, when the underlying shared file system is perfectly all right during the operation, but something 
um, like for instance the quotas or uh, uh, i mean you've exceeded your quotas or you're uh, actually uh, i mean we detect that uh, there is going to be a data loss because you're trying to uh, shrink below consumed space and so we used to set the use uh, an error status on these resources and then bail out um, so what would what this would do is disallow any further management or path interaction until you've uh, ascertained that everything is all right um, but then we we realize this is actually infructuous um, so now now in situations when we're reasonably sure that the shared file system is all right we reset the share uh, status and alert the user via asynchronous user messages and we've also improved the user messages api uh, to allow querying uh, querying by uh, timestamp and intervals uh, we had several uh, shared driver improvements as well uh, including from um, the NetApp uh, drivers as well as the ZFS on Linux, Linux driver, both of which added support for cloning across storage pools and across uh, availability zones. And um, the Dell EMC Unity driver, uh, it now supports managing and unmanaging of share servers, shares, and share snapshots. Um, I wanted to uh, also uh, call out a uh, is a security issue uh, uh, that's CVE 9, uh, 2020-9543, uh, a vulnerability that was identified and fixed in this release and the fix was backported all the way to stable queens. Um, but of, uh, it does affect older versions um, of, of Manula uh, as described in the CVE. So if you are running an older version, um, you should be uh, trying to fix this with the patches provided. Um, this cycle, we also added support for um, the OpenStack client, uh, and you can now perform CRUD operations on shares, access rules, and share types. Uh, of course, there's a lot of work left to be done. Um, more of this is coming in the next cycle. Uh, and um, I, I mean, we're hoping if you're going to be using uh, the Osuri uh, release uh, at some point, you can upgrade your client and have these new features show up because the client is going to be backwards compatible at all times. Um, uh, alongside, we also worked on Manila UI a bit, and uh, it now supports IPv6 access controls and shared group capabilities. However, again, uh, there's a ton of work to be done to catch up with the rest of the evolution of the Manila API here. Um, and we're looking for help uh, on this project. So if you're willing to help, please ping me or anyone in the uh, Manila community. Finally, uh, we're excited to work on many, many new things in the uh, Victoria cycle. We're looking to discuss these improvements in the upcoming uh, virtual PTG. So please join us there and uh, influence what's coming. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kurtim. Uh, very excited to see there's a lot of the new feature to uh, to keep Manila uh, stable and keep it uh, with a lot of new static features. And now we move to uh, MacNown. So um, I will turn over to uh, Felon. Yep. Uh, thank you, Rico. Uh, my name is Felon Wang. Uh, now I'm the Dell manager of uh, Catalyst Cloud, which is a cloud computing company based in New Zealand. Uh, and now I'm serving the, the PDL of Magnum. If you are not uh, very familiar with Magnum, Magnum is uh, the container info service of OpenStack, uh, which can help you sort of deploy uh, a production level community service, community cluster in minutes. So it's just like um, GKE or EKS, um, but surely you can also use uh, Magnum to deploy Mesos or Docker Swarm. So, you know, those um, platforms are not very popular nowadays. Um, as for Osori release, um, I'm very proud of the work we have done given uh, we have such a small team. Uh, so for the, uh, the highlights for Osori, uh, we mainly focus on keep the, uh, the Magnum can support um, the latest version of Kubernetes. So now we can, uh, support the latest um, V1.16, V1.17, and V1.18. And um, all those versions can uh, easily pass the CNCF conformance test. That means um, user can uh, get the confidence 
to migrate workloads from our two uh, the other uh, Kubernetes platforms. And we also um, upgrade Calico. Uh, Calico is one of the CNI uh, network driver we support it. Uh, to the latest Calico version, um, not, it's not V1. It's not actually, uh, there is a typo, it's v, uh, V3.13.1 uh, version. That's the latest stable version of Calico. And we also upgrade um, final version to um, V0.12 as well. And uh, as well, the core DNS has been upgraded to uh, V1.6.6. Uh, and the Kubernetes dashboard, uh, we just upgraded to V1, uh, the V2. That's the latest uh, version. I think it just released um, two or three weeks ago. And another very excited feature is we can support Cinder uh, uh, CSI because um, the entry Cinder uh, support uh, has been deprecated. And another very uh, excited feature is um, in Magnum, now user can do rolling upgrade to upgrade uh, both the, the Kubernetes version and the base operating system. Uh, and the, the other benefit is bonus is um, there is no downtime for the, um, the application, the service running on the community service. And another good one is uh, with the latest Fedora core S driver, uh, we can support using the, the SHA-256 verification to make sure um, the Habicube image uh, is uh, the right one you got from the, uh, especially when you get the image from a public uh, container registry like the dog hub. Uh, that pretty much the, uh, the, the work we have done in Osori. And actually there are some uh, more features happening. Uh, it's, it's very, very close to merge. Uh, and we probably cherry pick them back to uh, Osori as well. Uh, the first one is um, um, master load balancer allowed CIDRs. That means user can um, set um, allowed CIDRs for the um, master load balancer to control um, the IP range which can access your community's API. And another thing is uh, rotate the, uh, the CI source. And uh, the Helm 3 work is also happening. Uh, is uh, very close to, to be merged as well. No, and also we have done quite a lot of improvements for the node group support in, uh, in Magna. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much um, the work I would like to share uh, for this meeting. And if uh, you guys are interested in uh, Magna, please just uh, pop up into the, uh, the OpenStack uh, dash containers IRC channel. Cheers. Okay, thanks, Felong. Uh, very exciting to see there's a lot of things working in the Mac now. And, and also since we, uh, since we mentioned a lot of Mac now and Kubernetes, uh, may I also mention that uh, in the past one or two cycles that in, and also in the U3 cycles, uh, the, the, the bounding between Kubernetes and OpenStack becomes stronger. And you can also now use in Kubernetes to uh, manage to uh, manage or operate resources for all above services. I'm talking about you can using uh, Mac now to operate Kubernetes, and Kubernetes can can create resources in Manila, in uh, in Octavia, in Singer, as well, and uh, and also Zoom has a has a, a plug in the in the controller manager. And the only thing we, we uh, uh, he he didn't have uh, the uh, Kubernetes bounding, but he is the one to uh, help behind Zoom and Mac now. So there's indeed a lot of uh, exciting features and uh, a lot of uh, exciting cross uh, community work in uh, in those three. Uh, so uh, thanks, Felon, to for the great work. And uh, we now move to Cyborg. Uh, so uh, I hand over to uh, Emo. Hi, hi. Thank you, Rico. Hi. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, this is Yimong Bao from Cyborg team. I will be the PTO for the Victoria release. 
and shortly after the introduction, I will use, I will use Chinese. And so due to some communication gap between between my team and the foundation, um, we uh, actually at the very first beginning, we didn't register for today's meeting. But uh, yesterday afternoon, I was told that they still got some seats available for us at both. But, but I, um, at first I was, we don't got enough time to prepare for the meeting. And uh, the, the, commun the community itself is very consider considerate. And they even encouraged me that Mandarin is okay since most participants are Chinese. So, uh, so I will try to use English as much as possible. But if Chinese not, will not uh, clearly uh, describe the features, highlight, I will use Chinese. Okay, so my apologize. And so next I will introduce the, the highlights. Mm. So um, um, before the highlights, I will give a briefly introduction about the cyborg. Um, cyborg Wing Ofu Cyborg,Nova的配合可以创建一个带加速音键的收尾实力,然后加速器可以用Cyborg来管理。Cyborg从Sane版本加入了Big10的,经过了四个版本的眼镜以后,在真正意义上实现了我们的Cyborg的原
呃直 admin 可以直接来来控制这个设备是否呃希望它被用户去发现和使用。然后还有一个 API 的接。接口比较重要的就是说，我们呃，在 Bob 内部它叫做 Deployable 这样的一个操作，呃，这个 API， 然后也是呃完成了 AR 呃 VR 的一个新呃 list 的 show 完成了，然后删除了原先的一个 patch 的接口，呃，因为在前前面我们引入了一个另外的一个新的接口，所以不再需要这个 patch 了，然后也删除了 Deleted 的它的接口，嗯。关于 V 二 API 的话，呃，我们还支持了，就是从 V 二点零版本 Cyberware 开始支持了 V 版本，然后呃，也是与 OpenStack 的 Micro Version 呃进行同步，可以让开发人员在修改 API 代码的时候能够兼容，然后又呃让它的修改不至于影响到用户的使用。然后第三个比较重大的修改就是说，我们也呃支持了 Cyberware 的 Client。的修改，呃，呃 ，client 的修改也就是与 A V R A P I 进行了同步，同时也支持了社区的 OpenStack S D K。然后目前的话，呃 ，OpenStack 呃 Cyborg 的所有的操作都是以 OpenStack Accelerator 呃 command 巴拉巴拉，就是统一是这样一个操作。嗯，目前的 client 库也可以是可以通过 pipe install 来直接安装使用的。然后第四个比较重大的改进就是我们新增了 Tempest 的测试用例，就是呃之前是没有没有呃建立这种呃可靠机制的，现在我们增加了最最基本的就是呃创建虚机呀啊、呃、一些基本操作的 Tempest 的用例，然后在接下来的 V 版本我们会增加更多的呃操呃测试用例来提升 c y b o r g 的可靠性。呃，然后 U 版本的 highlights 主要就是这些，然后我把那个呃，呃，在六月份的 Virtual PDG 的 link 发到，发，看一下，我要找一下，然后稍后我把那个 V 版本的 link 然后发到群里群里面，如果大家感兴趣的话，可以在上面添加 topic 以及加入我们的讨论，嗯。So I I I just finished my introduction. So thanks, Alicia. Ah,、uh, thanks, Rico. Yeah, no problem. And thanks, Ah,、uh, Imon. And also thank you for bringing the diversity here. I'm so excited to see every time we have uh uh, uh women leaders here to uh to share.、Uh, we have a lot, but、uh, always excited to see more. And、uh, so now we go we go into next section, which is question Q and A time. Um. I think that's wrong. Let's tie it this way.、Uh, if you have any question, you can you can if you can use in English, it would be it would be great.、Uh, if you can't,、uh, we have a lot of speakers know Mandarin Chinese. So、uh, if you can use if you like to use in Chinese or any other languages, if you if you feel comfortable,、uh, feel free to do so, and、uh, we、uh, we will do our best to to translate. And 再来就是接下来我们就是那个问题提问时间嘛，就是如果如果说你大家有什么问题，就是可能英文不方便，大家讲中文也行。然后，呃，我们蛮多讲者是是是是是也会中文的嘛，然后我们也会尽力的，就是中英翻译的。就是看大家有什么问题吗 ？There is a, any question? Okay. Uh, before uh before any question pop up, the、uh, I I think I、uh, forgot to do two two announcement at the beginning of the the slide. So I'm going to do it here. First is that uh we are talking about the、uh, Usuli release. Uh, but we forgot to thank to the great、uh, release teams and and the and QA team to uh to actually guarantee the release is out, which Usuli is officially released yesterday. Uh, I uh. Let me share the the main list link here. So yes, so thanks to Sean and his team, this release team,、uh, great work,、uh, and they they put a lot of effort to make sure、uh, projects are on track with the schedule. So thank thanks thanks for them. 
and the other is that the uh, we we uh, we have a, a virtual Ursuli celebration tomorrow. Uh, uh, let me share the mailing list thing here. So, uh, so yeah, you can find uh, more information for in uh, openset.org slash uh, uh, Ursuli. And uh, for we have a virtual Ursuli uh, celebrations. So. Uh, so if you uh, if you like to join us for uh, for celebrations party, uh, Kendall uh, Kendall Nelson is the one to uh, to gathering the 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 party there. So uh, it's virtually online. So uh, please join if your time zone allow you to, um, or if you like to uh, hosting a party in uh, in Asia's friendly time zone, uh, you can also contact to Kendall. Uh, so. Uh, before before anything else, uh, is there any questions for the update? Oh yeah, so I'm uh, reading the Zoom uh, messages. You you do missing you do miss the Magnum update already, but don't worry. Uh, we we actually have videos which will be posted very quick. So uh, you you can follow up the uh, you can follow up the mailing list in OpenStack. Uh, which we uh, the, the 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 meeting the meeting videos from the previous meeting is already published, and this one will be due as quick as well. Yeah, no problem. Okay, if uh, if we don't have any further questions, uh, uh, let me yeah thank thank everyone to join attend and uh, thanks. OpenStack Foundation to uh, to make this happen and uh, thank everyone to contribute to Usuli. I will see you everyone in the, our virtual events. I see everyone in uh, in Victoria Cycle. Uh, be there, contribute, review, and uh, send mailing feedback. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.